Well, happy Friday to everybody. We have come to the end of another week, and I hope this week has been good for you. And looking forward to Sunday, Lord willing. And with it being Friday, we have been looking in the book of Hebrews, looking to Jesus and all that the Hebrews writer tells us about Jesus. And again, the Hebrews writer was trying to encourage Christians who are some probably had already given up, some on the verge of giving up. And we recently saw in Hebrews chapter 11 that he gave them a list of examples, of great examples throughout the history of mankind um, who were faithful, who remained faithful no matter what. And then finally, in chapter 12, in the first four verses, he gives the greatest example of all. And it was that of Jesus and how Jesus suffered for us and Jesus was faithful. And how, as he told them, you have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. So do not be weary and discouraged. Well, now he wants to teach them and us something else about what they were going through and dealing with and the faith that they were to have. We pick up today in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 where he tells them, you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons, as to children of God. You have forgotten how you are children of God and God is your father and how God is, as he's about to tell us, is trying to teach you and train you and guide you. He says, my son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, as he's quoting here. In verse 5, my son, do not despise the chastening and the discipline of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, and, who, and he scourges every son whom he receives. And so he says, listen, do not despise the chastening, the discipline, the training that God is giving to you. Don't be discouraged when you're rebuked by God because whom the Lord loves, he's doing this to. The Lord chastens, the Lord disciplines, the Lord, the Lord trains and corrects and helps and teaches his children whom he loves. That's why. And who he receives. He goes on to say, if you endure chastening, then God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten, does not train, does not discipline? But if you are without chastening and training, of which all have become partakers, well, then you are illegitimate and not sons. He says, if we are not going to receive the training and discipline of God, then we cannot call ourselves children of God. Or if you wanted to look at that another way, I guess you could say, if we do not accept the training and discipline of God, then we're really disobedient children, rebellious children. He says illegitimate and not sons, not received as sons, if we're not going to receive the training and instruction and discipline from God. Furthermore, he goes on to say, verse 9, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. That's true. You know, we, you know, for the most part, we grow up in a home where our parents train us and teach us when we do wrong. They correct us. They teach us to do right. We honor and respect our parents. Well, he says, well, then how much more should we readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? If we understand respecting the discipline and training that our physical parents give us, then we even more so should respect and subject ourselves to the discipline and training of God. For they, that is our human parents, for they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them, but God does so for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. God is chastening, correcting, training, guiding, helping us be partakers of his holiness. You know, he says, our human parents, they train us up to be, you know, what they think we should be as far as, you know, our morals and right and wrong and how we act and don't act as seems best to them. But God, God does so far and above to make us holy like him. 
Now, one reality, one reality of this, verse 11, he says, is no one, or now no chastening or discipline seems joyful for the present time, but painful. You know, discipline, training, being corrected, it's, it's not all fun and games, it's not always easy. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Training is hard. Training of, of any kind. Discipline, correction, chastening, learning something is not always easy and it's not fun all, all the time. Especially when, you know, we get it wrong and we got to be corrected or... You know, we're being taught things that are challenging and hard, but we're learning over time to get better at it. But in the end, this training, this discipline is worth it. It brings great rewards. It brings the fruit of righteousness to those who allow themselves to be trained by it. God is striving to make us holy like him, to, for us to bear fruits of righteousness. To be like him. And so this is what he tells them. And I, I think especially with what they're going through. And even the persecution and the things, the trials they're facing. That is a training that God is allowing them to learn. To have faith and to endure. And, and the writing of this letter. The Hebrews writer writing to them. And rebuking them. And also encouraging them. This is the training of the Lord as well. And they've got to accept it. They've got to learn from it. They've got to be faithful, learn to endure so that they can grow stronger and better as time goes on. And so he goes on to tell them, verse 12, Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down in the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated but rather healed. Start encouraging and being encouraged in doing the things you're supposed to be doing. Before something worse happens, before they fall away, as he's about to say in a moment. He goes on to say, verse 14, what we need to do, what they need to do, is pursue peace with all people. And pursue holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. And that is a strong statement and reminder of why we need to be pursuing holiness, the holiness of God. Because without holiness, without living the way God wants us to, then we will not get to see God. Looking carefully, verse 15, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Lest we fall short of the grace of God, verse 15. And the way we fall short of the grace of God is... By not living for him. Lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. And by this many become defiled. Watch out for bitterness. Watch out for that bitterness that can come and can fester. And can lead us away from God. Lead us away from our brethren. We've got to watch out for that bitterness. Lest there be any fornicator or profane, godless person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. I mean, this, he brings the example of Esau and how Esau just, you know, for example, his birthright. He, he was so flippant with his birthright, didn't care about his birthright. And for a mere morsel of food, a little bit of food, he threw away a great honor and a great gift that was meant for him. And then later, even after he was, you know, uh, Jacob stole the blessing from him. Verse 17, for you know that afterward when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. The Hebrews writer's point in bringing this up is don't be like Esau. Don't throw away. The salvation, the grace of God that you have in Christ. He's telling them if they turn away from Christ, they turn away from God, if they give up, then they're going to be lost. There will be no blessing. There will be no grace. There will be no salvation for them. 
He's telling them you can't quit on God and still expect to receive something from him. And so he's reminding them to learn from the training that God is giving them, the discipline, the chastening, the training, learn from it, grow from it, become better, grow, be more like God, be holy like God, have faith and endure so that they can continue in the grace of God and have the blessing of salvation that is only found in Jesus. And that's the same message for us today. We've got to remain faithful, endure, keep going. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't quit. Don't turn our backs to God. But be faithful no matter what. And learn and grow through trials, temptations, life, whatever. Continue to learn and grow. Become stronger and stronger. And God will help us. Jesus will help us. His Spirit helps us. His Word helps us. Prayer to God, he will helps. But we've got to actually do it. So let's continue to do that and learn as they were learning to continue to be faithful. God bless.